No. <laughs> I'm already obnoxious. You know what? Maybe I, I'm not obnoxious. Because a lot of people seem to be saying... More, Andy. <laughs> no, they don't say that. I don't listen to what they say, but... Uh, we're just doing a test, by the way. This is not the show has not started yet. No, it hasn't. Okay, all right. I think it's working. Hi, we're here. We Good are evening. here. This uh, is a special edition. Oh, a special test show. I wish I was a listener to share in the excitement of what this is. It, oh God, it's uh, well per last week's episode. Uh, turns out the movie did work out. This we is are, um, that's we right. Are, we are coming to you from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. On the set of The Fiddling Horse. Yes. Can't believe it's happened. It's kind of crazy. Andy and I spent uh, the entire day in a horse stable in Lafayette, Louisiana, doing scenes, just he and I, all day. And then we brought the camera crew. And <laughs> you got nothing to do. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> but it's been fun. And it's been, it was just so, it's so... Um, very, uh, well, you're the lead. How did I get here? You're the lead in the movie. This is the thing that he's been reminding me all day. <laughs> where is it? Like he says to me, where's your name on the, I didn't even look about that. Where is your name on the shoot sheet? I have no idea. If you're, there's only two names on the shoot sheet. Yeah. Me and you. <laughs> right. If your name your is K. number one on the sheet, on the shoot sheet. Yeah. You're the lead in the movie. Well, okay. And you're, you said you're the lead because you have the most lines, which I think most people would agree. I've said I'm a lead. Why do I always try to you embarrass you? You are also you? a lead. <laughs> I try to always try to embarrass you on air. I don't do it. I know. It. I know o- you do. Off the air, I do it too. Yeah, it's less of a problem. Yeah, because off the air, you could correct it and say, look, that was idiot right. uh, into that. Now, until you get to edit it out, people <laughs> think that we are. Well, I think that I am the, uh, I'm in this movie because of stunt casting, right? right? They're hoping... <laughs> I will bring people into the theaters. Well, yours is the only part that was actually written for you. Right. It says Barry Bitterman, but... In, but I mean, I'm making my part seem like it was written for me, <laughs> but you. Well, that's <laughs> it's the magic that you do, but my part says um, Barry Bitterman, but in the first scene it says Andy Kindler walks in as Barry Bitterman, so they're not even... He's <laughs> right. not even... This it does movie, actually say Andy Kindler in parentheses. Yeah, do you see that? Yes. <laughs> And so th- this is this is the one movie that uh, I could say is all about me. Not really. I don't know why I said that. But the thing is that uh, the, oh, I meant to say it's the only way I, I, I only way I've le- ever been in a movie is if it was written for me like this because I have not been been in a movie. That's what I thought until last week. <laughs> what do you mean? I thought I would only be in a movie if someone wrote a part for me, and then boom, oh, here I am. well. Now, do you remember uh, pilot season that uh, that was done by uh, Sam Cedar with Sarah Silverman in it? Was that a movie or? Was that I don't. A- that's what I'm trying to think. I think it was eventually. Didn't like Jake uh, Jake Kasdan direct that? Oh, I don't know about that. You, you, that. No, no, I don't think he did. Okay. No, there must have been something else. But I'm trying to think of what on my resume. My sister always claims that when I was in the Seven Deadly Sins. On uh, HBO, that that's technically a movie. I had one line. How come Musso? How come Musso gets through? Based on the Musso and Franks, why is Musso? But I don't even think that's a, a movie. No. If it's on HBO, right? Well, I think it's a movie. Sure, it's a TV movie. But we're we're quibbling. We're quibbling. <laughs> but anyway, I think we're both in shock because first of all, uh, Josh got here on Sunday. And he shot on Saturday. I got here Saturday and shot all day Sunday. It's Monday now. Why shot all day today? Why would I feel the need to tell people what you when you've been here when I don't know the facts and I mess them up? Now you've been here since. I'm last just glad week. I got a day without you. Well, I didn't, I didn't know that it was. I really thought it was going to be pushed off to January because it was really literally last minute. It was. And but uh, in fact, I was supposed to leave. Friday, right, and it ended up getting pushed yet another day. So I came in Saturday, but I'm but, gl- uh, and um, we're shooting all day tomorrow. Then I'm flying home tomorrow night to have back surgery. You're staying for another couple of days or another day. I'm staying tomorrow, and I fly back Thursday 
what is tomorrow's Tuesday. I'm yes. shooting Wednesday, and I fly back Thursday night. Okay, I have surgery on Thursday. And now your surgery, if the listeners want to join you there or send a card, is Thursday. We're not going to say the hospital, and uh, <laughs> it will be over. So. It will be over. Yeah. It will be over. And meanwhile, I will be maybe doing some of the greatest acting of all time while you're being surgerized. There you go. Just because of the joy of knowing I'm in pain. You know, I wouldn't put. I wouldn't go that far with it. He's. Uh, uh, he has now barred me. He is. I, I have not barred you. Unbelievable. I not oh, oh, I see. I see. You're reaching for yourself, folks. We're not going to lie to you about things. <laughs> Occasionally. We are breaking a Louisiana state law as we podcast. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, so thanks. We're, we're vaping, but they say, I don't know why I'm whispering, but they say that the laws are bad here. Now, could we be retroactively arrested for this? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you really don't know? I don't think we can. I think we could. Are we that little of a rebel? Neither one of us would have been Lenny Bruce if we're worried that when we got back to L.A., uh, no, I'm worried about it. we have to come back here in January and finish oh, the movie. Oh, <laughs> and now they're on to us. Exactly. <laughs> First of all, I, I can't believe it. Well, he says New Orleans is different. This is C.J. Wallace knows this area. C.J. Wallace has uh, lived in, I think, New Orleans and Baton Rouge. No, that's not the case. But he's from Canada originally. Right. Then he spent some time in the French Foreign Legion. Right. And he also has three feet. Can you believe it? He's an impressive dude, really, with all the stuff he's working against. He's really making things for happen. I was worried that my energy would be off tonight. <laughs> and you know what? I should have been. No. All, all I know is that you're clutching that vape <laughs> like it's a baby. <laughs> I've never. I told you I did this joke in my act. You've heard my act, right? And uh, where I say I got pulled over by a cop today because uh, uh, I had a vape pen. But then we both agreed that it really doesn't get you that high. <laughs> And that joke doesn't get a laugh. Do you think it's just not going to ever be a strong joke? Or you have to know that vape doesn't get you that high? Um, I think, I, first, first off, this is the rare case where I think your joke is funny. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and it should work. Hey, you did a left turn there. <laughs> but I don't think everyone agrees. I think some people think, That's what and I think, it think is. that vape is actually stronger. And I think technically it might be, but as a, you know. As a lifer, I can tell you that I, I, I do better with uh, actually smoking flour. I can feel it throughout my body. Now right. you, you call, it's time to stop, Andy. You're calling it flour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't when when when, <laughs> when did they start calling it flour? It's like they used to be pot when I was you know, and I was I don't want to say you could buy a lid. Right. I don't know why they called it a lid. Well, you have to call it something to distinguish it from all the other products at this point. Right. So you could call it Bud, I guess, but but, but it's for, just semantics. It is semantics, but I think that people I notice who work in uh, in uh, pot shops, or maybe people who own pot shops, always talk about it. it's they have great flour. Yeah. No, I haven't. Start, I didn't call it that before pot shops. Right. Yeah. Um, and I I'm think, just speaking their language. I recently, and just for the, the sake of the podcast, I, uh, the podcast, I bought Budlets. Oh yeah. I'm, and, I'm a big fan of Budlets. They're half the price usually. They're not. They're not half the potency. I think they're. Are they as potent? Yeah, I think so. So what's? I mean, it's like it's like it's like Christmas for me. Well, yeah. It's but people like those sort of jewelry counter buds, you know. So. Yeah, but now I'm starting to look for. See, now I'm starting to look for deals the for the first few months when <laughs> yes. it was legal. Oh, it's almost been a year. For the first ten months, I was like, whatever you got. I'm buying it now. Right. Have you tried? No, but now I'm going to try. Right. Now I'm a, a savvy shopper. But then when you had to claim $30,000 on your end of year of tax forms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to do that. I don't either. But we are here, and this is, uh, we haven't gone out, ventured out of your house often. So this no, is a special is, treat. <laughs> yes. I think I've teased enough about how what a special treat this is. It is a special treat. It's also special because it'll be shorter than most. Yes, but, it's going to be. Is it going to be an hour edited or now? We don't know. I the don't the know. more I'm talking, I'm just <laughs> it's so stupid. I, I'm serving no purpose by my my speech about how the podcast is going to go. Yeah. Sometimes I like you'll stop me. Uh, you know, you'll give me a look. Yeah. And I'll I'm resent. Too tired. I'll I'm be too resentful. Tired for the look tonight. But but then other times I feel like I should get the look. I should give the look to myself. Yeah, 
I feel, I think I've also because I was acting with you all day and feeling like I needed to be one notch more supportive <laughs> than, <laughs> than normal. I think it's, that's still there. Well, how was it acting with me on a ter- in terms of uh of just a uh, was it fun? I thought it was fun. I, I, I had a great time. It. I really did. I had a really fun day. I thought it was really fun to do a different thing with you. Yeah. You know, and I felt like it never felt weird. It never felt like it was. No. You know, I, you know, you know, eye contact wasn't hard during scenes and things like right. that. You know, we weren't, you know, we weren't fucking with each other. So it was, you know, so it was really fun. Yeah, it was absolutely great. And it, it was, again, just so such a weird thing, you know. Yeah, that ended that, up this that, way. Does everyone know? Have you caught up with people? What your, why it is this way? Does everyone know what it is? Or do you feel that that's a part of your contract you have to keep on the QT? Uh, I that, don't know. What's your point? <laughs> oh, no, that you didn't know that you were going to get this part. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I, I think we, ta- we, we talked about this last week. Oh, we did. Well, of yeah. course I forget. So, yeah, okay. the, the actor who was playing the lead dropped out at some point. Yes, okay. So, and uh, I was tapped. Right. And so... Uh, With the claim... That he'd been wanting that to actually happen for months, which is bullshit. But, but I, I'll still, I'll still, you know, I'll still like now lap we, it up. <laughs> we told CJ, we said to CJ that we we love him to listen to the podcast, but I don't want him to listen now that you said more. <laughs> <laughs> well, CJ even told me that he had, because of all the delays with the movie, he stopped listening to the podcast for the last couple of months because he just couldn't take oh he couldn't my take God. even the, he said he couldn't take <laughs> even the slightest ripping. Because <laughs> uh, I told him, it's like, we're not going to bash on you. We have to work for you. <laughs> so, yeah. so we're going to be pretty nice. But he still, he said I was just too fragile until uh, we yeah. actually had this, film this run. This guy is unbelievable, though. He's a workhorse. I've never seen anybody. And he's got a great eye. He really does. He does. Yeah, he's shooting great stuff that I've, you know, what I've seen so far looks great. You know, I haven't luckily seen my performances at all yet, but I've seen what the shots look like. Here's what I think about seeing your own performances. I think no matter how savvy you are or brilliant you are about other people's things, right. it's like looking in the mirror. How many times have you looked in the mirror? I know I'm devastatingly handsome, but when I look in the mirror, it doesn't look that way to me. <laughs> you don't see that. <laughs> I don't see it, but I don't see myself. I can see myself in pictures and go, I kind of like the way that looks, but I don't look at myself in the mirror and really get a view of myself. Right. I don't think you can in a way, unless you're a narcissist, right? No, I think narcissism absolutely uh, distorts your... Oh, you that's right. But I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'm more objective than a lot of people just because I've been writing TV and casting actors and seeing things go from script to, you know, to screen. Right, right. You know, and I've directed actors. And so I feel like I'm maybe one notch more objective about it. But the self-loathing voice, you can't, you can't yeah. remove, you can't remove that from the equation. No, and you also can't remove that it looks, you also can't. I don't know. You can't remove in any, and I don't want to say we're artists, but let's say it. Right. But in any art form, I don't think you can eliminate completely the fact that you, the artist is not really responsible for how his stuff or her stuff is received in a way. There's a part of it that they may hate. Like Paul Simon, he hates all these early songs, right? Yeah. He hates the lyrics on some of these songs. You right. Know? But they're great songs. Right. He may even be right that they're not as great lyrics, but... Is there's still a part that that it's really for for other people. My comedy, no, is for and, you I, to and enjoy. I feel like that's how that's the only way I can come to peace with any of this. Is, yeah. is the, the two things, which is I don't have a sense of how people take me necessarily, right? You know, uh, and I would say I probably skew my vision of how people take me towards the negative. Yeah, which I you had told me this, and I never knew this. Yeah, I've always felt like I've ha- I have sort of very little outward appeal (laughs) you know i think people like what i do sometimes that you know i don't think i i don't think i repulse people (laughs) but i don't feel like i have star power i don't feel like i have that kind of uh the charisma well but that's uh, but i don't but what i I, uh, the thing is is that i know the thing is that's where in the the first time i ever felt when you said that that we had some where, I, where similarities as people because I hate myself. Yeah. See, because I think the that is um, part of you being hard on yourself. 
you know, I it sounds like that, but you don't think so. But I feel like it is. It's not something that I carried around as self pitying or as. Um, I wouldn't have even known you felt I that way. Carried it around just as a fact in the back of my mind, like you know, you don't. It's not. That's just not the track for you. you know? Wow, I don't. I like mean, I feel like I'm special. In some areas, you know, right? I feel like I'm a special joke writer. I feel like I'm a pretty good director. I, feel, you know, there are things where I feel highly competent. Yeah, you know, this isn't one of those areas. You know, but, I, I know what a good performance should look like of a script. Yes, but trying to get my instrument to play that song, I don't have a process for. You know, well, you don't have. I don't have experience. Experience. The yeah. only thing that you don't have that I have more of, but not tons of more, I mean, some more of, is just experience acting. Yeah. No, I mean, I haven't done a dialogue scene since Mystery Science Theater, and that wasn't even really acting, you know? I think, you know, I was looking at those. I did a fucking two-page speech yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, like... When you were, you, when you were, like, when you were, just, I never felt with women like, oh boy, they're, they're, it's their lucky day now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I never, no, and I, I never and felt I, like and one and of I, those guys. And honestly, I'm sure, I'm certain that that picture of myself mm -hmm. of not being that appealing to people is an extension of how I felt women felt about me when I was young. All right, so now you've absolutely proved my point that it's a similarity that we both have. Well, I, about I, well I'm not trying to debate that. I don't know why I thought way. you were trying to debate it. I'm just trying to uh, No, I think you I'm were saying to it was explain objective. my particular flavor of right. self-hatred that it is that there is there's not a lot, there's not anguish that goes along with it is I guess what I'm trying to say. It's not like I feel like there is any sort of injustice that's been portrayed towards me like i just feel like oh this is how the, this is where the world put me you know mm. so it's not like i'm feeling like i got robbed i've been you know i've been working for 30 years i'm happy about that so but i'm always looking to do something different and so when something this different yes. comes along it's really yeah. exciting i mean i've been having a great time just because after 32 fucking years to do something that's so challenging and foreign and different is great well, I also think it's a degree it's a degree thing and because obviously I'm looking for not how are you I, a lot of times I, I compare what is like someone like Josh who had a, a supportive upbringing, you know, how's he looking at life? So but you can never do that. No two people are the same. So I understand when you say you don't like think of yourself that way like as a, like a, you really harden yourself that way yeah and i think it's just it's just a path you know it's just something that happened years ago where the industry sort of told me we want you as a writer <laughs> you know we don't need you in the talent pool we want you over here and so i sort of felt like i belonged there you know right and the other thing that's changed is losing 50 pounds which has given me a sort of different confidence and a different swag if you will you know it's not like i'm suddenly you know out there, you know, feeling suave, but I just feel, you know, that's that's a level of self loathing that doesn't walk around with me every day now. You know? Well, that's body I, image has changed, you know, and that's absolutely, you know, because I'm very anti how we look at weight as a society and all that kind of stuff. But I can acknowledge you look different. Because you carry yourself differently, you yeah, can, I you see look it. tall. It's like I never knew how much taller you were than me. Yeah, you know. So now you look like a tall guy. Well, the combination of, of I think losing weight and also just the Pilates and getting my torso strong and upright, and you know, don't my posture's you, better. Don't talk. We're two men in a room on the road. <laughs> my wife's right down the hall, but still, don't get into this torso stuff. And Andy Kindler continues his latest. Kind of what do we call like a homophobic jag I'm on? Sort of. Sort of like <laughs> homophobia light. Homophobia light. Uh, I'll share the ottoman with you here. <laughs> you know, if you people could see how we're sharing the ottoman right now, I think you would look differently at the Middle East. It's a handheld show. Usually we have mic stands. Oh, that's true. That's different, too. I like the holding of the it's mic. It's not too bad. Well, it makes me talk into the mic. That's true. But I ne who would have ever thought that two... 
uh, Jewish people who are almost exactly alike could ever share an ottoman together. It's amazing. You know, it's amazing. If that's if this can happen, why can't we have peace everywhere? Also, the word shmagegi is in the uh, script. Uh, just to prove that it was written for you. <laughs> and for schnicket, which I think is like a, I've never heard that word. Is it like a Mad Magazine word? It's kind of a Mad Magazine but word. It's a- <laughs> I think it was a placeholder is what I think it was for when we come up with the better word. <laughs> I love when you call things a placeholder. That should be our next shirt. Placeholder theater. Well, it'll just be a what it is. A voucher for a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but this is you no. Know, now the fact that we are I don't want to make it a big deal that we're doing a podcast when we're in the middle of an experience. We did debate it though. We were both so fucking tired when we got back to the hotel that we were just like, All right, is this the week? <laughs> is uh, this the week yeah, we just yeah. But then you pointed out and here's the thing, here's how much we care about you the listener because mm. i said to josh i came back and i was like uh oh man josh i don't know you still want to do this well we don't have to do it but we will miss a week and we so far we have not missed a week right every monday there's no, except for the clip show yeah but that was still a new, That's show. A new show yeah and so what we're saying is the people who listen this is their life blood <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, I have to tell you, though, there is a- added pressure, which is what I think how you feel when you get your ego involved in anything. There is added pressure that when people say, oh, I look forward to hearing your show. Right. I, there, I do feel like, oh, what if they- I'm, I'm medicine for them. <laughs> <laughs> right. And meanwhile, when I get tired of a podcast, which I do all the time, just it's just because I, well, I listen to it and I come back to it or whatever. Right. You know, it's like I don't make it a big deal. <laughs> well, we have plenty of listeners like that. There's plenty of people who are like, hey, just hit show 60, you know, or something. Right, like, you know, so. right. I think we have 40 listeners total, and two of them are out of town. <laughs> That's us. Now, we're not going to be able to do the usual uh, d- uh, departments and headings and recurring bits and running gags that you have come to love about us. No, no. This is frill-free. I We did not see The Nutty Professor. We did not. Well, there's no homework this week. We will do Nutty Professor next week. Uh, depending on now you're going uh, i don't want to make you nervous but you're going under the knife why did they ever use that as an expression that's not a euphemism no but i think it was designed for over drama oh going under the knife and the thing is your thing is all laser they don't even make an incision i heard <laughs> well you didn't hear right then but you showed i don't know if your doctor is the right doctor because you showed me him performing psychosurgery on yeah the- <laughs> Well, it was cool how they pulled out all those weird guts and stuff. I have to say, I feel bad when people fall for things. I don't know how they fall for these faith for healing surgery. things. And the faith healing things. I can walk. How do you know that person couldn't walk before? What are you, an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> now, I could see how someone, because a friend of mine went into Scientology, Judy Toll. Yeah. And uh, you know, I tried to convince her not to go and stuff. Right. And, and But, the, like... In general, like Scientology is like, I could I could see that coming a mile away. Right. But that's more sophisticated than other things. Not much. Not much. I mean, a lot of like that. well, it's just hard to not to go to not see this science fiction writer who literally claimed to his science fiction writer friends, "I'm going to create a religion." Right. And yes. and then it takes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Your, check your uh, button there. You know, I found now with the better. microphone. That's better with the on on. No, but the thing is, that may be the downside of me holding. It the might microphone. be. Yeah. I I'm shouldn't really have bought switch. the 58s with the switch, but that's what I have. That's what they have. I'm time. doing a thing now, like I'm where I'm about to shoot the audience with my gun, <laughs> like that. Yeah. Like uh, a, like when I used to tour as AK-47. Yeah. No, you have definitely a leather pants grip on that mic. <laughs> I forgot what we were talking about, but this is normal. Normally, it wouldn't be good for me to forget what I'm talking about. But what we don't care, right? It doesn't matter. It's all about flow. <laughs> well, we I don't think we've ever had good flow. <laughs> <laughs> that kiss, can't be what... Kiss pretty, my grits! That's a pretty good flow. That's, good. that's a good joke. That's a good joke. Now, if I had said it, you wouldn't laugh. It's true. You, you go, oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Peabody? I, that's the thing about puns. We've talked about it before. They are funny and they are hacky. That ha- came up today on the set where uh, 
CJ said the thing that he wrote was kind of hacky. Oh, it was the the line. Well, people, you don't know. I played. I played Jiu Jitsu in a couple of action films. Right. And and CJ goes, but that's kind of hacky. But that's what that's the sweet spot. That's the Kindler. Or likes to, that's what I'd like to believe. <laughs> Well, the holiday season is is of uh, uh, among, among us. It what is. better time would there be than do you get a thought spiral mug? All go to zazzle dot com all this holiday season. Order a, a thought spiral mug and get a candy cane. At least I'm bailing out of the bit. <laughs> <laughs> See, a lot of comics won't. Right? They keep going. No, that's true. It's I going. hate those comics who are committed to their. Material. I hate it. <laughs> I'm se- that's what separates me from the from the really awful. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Put- I don't know why I love putting myself down. I think it's because I'm. If I get there first, exactly. It's that's beating, the whole it's beating thing. to the punch. Yeah, but uh, this could be fun. This is. I think the world's a little bit just not stunned that we were in a movie, but just that it happened so fast. Yeah. I'm a little, uh, I'm not even, I'm not having surgery this week. Right. It's a whirlwind week. It really is. (laughs) Good worlds and bad worlds, but very whirlwind. And I'm looking forward to the back surgery. I have to say as much as I don't want to have the actual thing. Right. I'm I'm really looking forward to being able to walk on a, on, on without considering it, you know? Well, that was funny today. At one point, Josh thought he had to fly through Atlanta. They told me they had booked my ticket because I'm leaving from the set tomorrow. I mean, we're not trying and, to brag or make us. And they uh, booked, Hollywood. and they so they booked a ticket from the small airport, which is near the set. Um, but she told me that she thought I had to fly to Atlanta first, which isn't good when your destination is Los Angeles and you're starting in the middle of the country. Well, that's when CJ asked you, "Are you?" Are you looking? How are you looking to, about the operation? And you said, "Oh, it's going to be pure hell and grueling." You were referring to the nine-hour plane ride, <laughs> right. which means that I think that you're someone who approaches uh, uh, medical things with equanimity. This is such bullshit. If anything happens to me, and if anything happens to you, our immediate thought is, "Cut it out! Don't not. This better go well." Right. Right. Yeah, I've just I've had big surgeries now, so the i the the pure idea of it doesn't terrify me. Right, okay, that's good. Yeah. You know, so and this is you know this I'll be out that day. It's it's full anesthesia, but I'll be out that day. So it doesn't. It's not. It's not looming other than just the phrase back surgery. Yeah, it's not looming in my head as something enormous. Have you ever? I could be wrong. Well, <laughs> you know, but, have you ever had? I've got your back surgery. <laughs> Were you? Will you have shitty jokes removed? Oh, my God. That's what I'm going to do after we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I tend not to worry about things that I absolutely can't control. It's one of the few positive things. Is that things. true? Yes. I don't worry when I get on an airplane. Okay. If I think about it, I can get nervous. Right. But then the other part of me says, you have no control over this. Right. And so... Are you like Allison? Allison actually has a sort of sense of relief because she's not going to get blamed if something goes wrong. On true. That's true. It won't be, if something does go wrong, it'd be horrible, but it won't be her fault. Well, that's the thing. I, I, I always say if I even, if every passenger was required to press a button on their seat for the plane to take off, right. then I would worry about it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I've never been, I've never, even though I am a control freak, I've never had, I've never had fears of flying or those kind of things, really. No, you know what? My, my fear is uh, when you're married, I think, or you're in a long-term relationship, whatever. I, that's the only that that to me when I was on my own, I didn't I didn't have that added thing of uh, oh my god, my, my you know, what if I right? I'll don't. be leaving someone behind. Yeah. Yeah. Now my wife doesn't you, care. No. Well, uh, she comes with you most of the time. So. <laughs> well, that's true. Not most of the time, but I love when she comes with me yeah. because it's like. I really feel like that one part that I do always worry about us being separate uh, and something happening to me separately, which is also just a crazy thing. Because it would have does. been so much cooler if you would have said something happening to her separately. No, no, no. But I, uh, <laughs> the reason why, <laughs> well, the reason why, uh, point taken. But the reason why I said that was because normally I'm flying to a gig. Right. She doesn't come with me. She came with uh, me for this shoot, but she doesn't come to me to when I play whack a whack a funnies. 
whack of, whack of jokes. No, but she goes to several gigs a year with you. Yeah, but those are fun. Montreal. Right. Yeah, the festivals and stuff. Yeah, the, the festivals and such. No, I know she doesn't just come and hang at the comedy condo all day. No, but I would like to because I love my wife, and uh, which a lot of people uh, find surprising. No, I love my wife, and the thing is that I uh, have even thought about doing driving, like a driving thing Yeah, one time with her. Like an RV? Yeah. Well, not <laughs> don't joke. My sister has a, my sister has an RV. Really? I mean, it's unbelievably beautiful, but I wouldn't. I can't. I wouldn't see myself. I can't do it. I don't see that being in my future. No, nor do I. I don't want to drive something that big. Is that? Uh, no, I'm with you there too. I, I I actually would like to take a car trip with Allison because she hasn't seen most of the country. Oh, that'd be good. I've seen all of the country. Me too. Me too. Because we're comics. Yeah. Not every bit? Pretty much. I think I've played 47 states now. Wow. Well, then that's not every bit. No. Uh, you haven't been to uh, Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi. I have not been to Mississippi. I think Mississippi and Maine are the only... I don't think I've been to Maine. I'm doing Maine in uh, in March with Segura. But, wow. Uh, but I... Uh, you know, I've never been to Maine, but I kind of like the music. I'm just leaving lots of room to cut around. Cover up the laughter? <laughs> <laughs> You're going with a, with a, a Segura to Maine? Yeah. Doing Portland, it. Maine? There is a Portland, Maine. I, it might be Portland, Maine. It's a big, it's a, we're doing um, New York, Maine, somewhere in Jersey, and somewhere in Connecticut, I think. What's the, have you been on? Like, like on, 2,000 seaters, I think. Oh, me too. But, uh, oh, I could play 2,000 seaters. That's not the problem. <laughs> the I problem just couldn't sell people. any tickets. People say, can I play a big room? Yes. But it's going to be empty and echoey. Well, it was, it was a genuine favor of Segura, actually, because I, I said I, was, I told him I was doing the album. and Oh. You know, he was going to give me some dates this year, but I said if you can give me something close to the album, it'd be very helpful. Oh, that's so, good. So he did like two weeks before. Man. That's how you're going to warm up the album maybe a little bit. I don't know what I'm saying. I'm hoping. It'll be like, you know, six or seven shows in five days or something. So. Well, everything's taken off for you. Me, <laughs> on the other hand. <laughs> you know, as long as you make it, that's all I care about, Josh. Well, it's well, not. It's nice of you to support the next generation like that. That's mean. Because <laughs> I have just recently, in the last few years, no longer thought of you as a young punk. I think you're right in that assessment. Now you're a man who I could see in a deli when they're 70 saying, like the corn baby. Well, like I'm, I'm acutely aware in this movie that I am playing a middle-aged man. Well, that's... Like, I know, that's the only vibe I can put out. <laughs> okay, well, you haven't fully felt the crushing defeat of knowing you're aging yet. I don't know. You're close. Balding, graying, back you know, you... surgery, cancer. Oh, Yeah. You know what? I'm glad I'm not you, is what I meant to say. No, no, this is really true, though, that when I thought I was, like, now I go, boy, if I was 47, I'd be in the prime. But when I was 47, I thought it was over. Right. So it's only when you're 30 that you shouldn't be whining about it being over. This actually is, like, the first time I can play a type. Oh. You know, because before I was a very nebulous age, and I was fat, and it, just, there was, it wasn't a type. Right, Now right. I'm down to, like, TV fat guy. <laughs> I see you as a uh, Mike of Mike and Molly. Guy. No, not Mike of Mike and Molly. Why am I even making these jokes? <laughs> the guy who used what's to be on uh, which, Yes, Dear. What's which, that? which fat guy can I compare you to? Michael. Ma Who's the guy who had the hat and he was on Yes, Dear? That's not the Mike from Mike and Molly. It may be Michael no, Malley. That was Michael Malley with the hat. Right. Yeah. I still have no good point to make. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just found out from Josh today that I've seen the movie Skidoo. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about it on the podcast. Yes. And, and, yet I, and yet we claim it's not early dementia? Is that what I'm not claiming? claiming that. You, you keep saying it like 16 times a day. And I say, Andy, you said that already. No, I didn't. Why do I sound like Don Adams? <laughs> uh, would you believe? Uh, and loving it. And well, now it's the end of the year, Josh. Though I mean, can you look back now? Look at all we've accomplished this year. Yeah. We started out the year thinking we were doing a movie. <laughs> right. We end the year in a movie. When did it start? Do you remember? Was it April or something? Uh, 
I later, feel it's later this has gone maybe. back. I mean, how long ago? I think this has gone back almost a year. No, I think it's more like six months. Six months. I found an email. From, can I say Mallory? It's okay, right? Sure. I found an email from Mallory uh, asking for my sizes in July, so I know it went okay. back that far. All right. But I've had uh, I've had a very philosophical uh, uh, view towards the film, which is I'm not getting involved with anything, and let me know. <laughs> You actually have. You haven't been uh, stressed out about it. You've been. I think your 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 whole theory was I'm not going to commit to this until I have a plane ticket in my hand. <laughs> well, that brings up the problem that I'm absolutely want not even crazy about talking about, but I do still often hate myself. So, like one of the ways I could hate myself was would be to say, you know, you should have, you know, you should have uh, had this script down. Back in July, the person who believes that I should have had this script down down in July, I hate that guy. Yeah, he's a dick. But he's very powerful voice. Right. You know? Sure. Because it always makes you feel like, like on the set today when I was having trouble with lines, I was like, no, of course you're having trouble with lines, you idiot. <laughs> you should have had this memorized back in August. But it was also like a shit ton of dialogue. Uh, uh, that's right. You know? That's right. And there's really, you can, you can memorize it all you want, I find. But once you're on set and speaking it, it, it's like coming from a different part of your brain. I wish I had realized that before. Because here's the way I would beat myself up in the past. I would name, I would say, any actor who is successful, I'm sure they do everything perfectly. Right. You know, you know, like you, you, I can't remember that Marlon Brando had to have words on the elevator door or something like oh, that. Oh, he fucking taped lines to everybody. Like actors, he would tape his lines onto. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> So, so 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 judging yourself that way is is bad. It's like like you're you're th- like I do have this thing like if I go on to this movie, it's uh, they they better think it's the greatest experience they've ever had with someone. Right. I have that whatever that's called. I had no illusion that would that would happen in this case with me because you know I, it was all about just don't fucking suck, don't embarrass them, don't <laughs> embarrass yourself. <laughs> you know because it was already. I mean, I truly did try to talk CJ out of casting me. Because I, I, I really did. I really thought it was a, like you had a serious, a serious. I had. I, about I really it. just kept giving him out. And you got mad. You got <laughs> mad at me. I look. I blow a little smoke up your ass, and you're on me. But what I said, I will stand by this until my dying day, which I hope isn't soon. But I saw you and those uh, mystery science theater things, and to me, boom, there's an actor. And I, uh, but you know, you don't back the horses I back because I don't know. But, uh, uh, but then I went too far with it. Like it's going to be a snap for you, Josh. No, you went. You're a natural. You're a natural. That was the wrong thing. And I was like, well, I'm not a natural. (laughs) Well, I think the expression. (laughs) Like I'm not saying that I can't pull it off, but I'm certainly not a natural. I think the expression "he's a natural" should be reserved for the movie "The Natural." Well, it's a good starting point. It's a good calibrator. Well, also, it's a good reference. <laughs> hey, what are we in the natural? You know, ten years from now, no one is going to know what you're talking. May I guess is that a classic movie? I think Roy Hobbs lives on. Yes. Who directed that? Uh, Levinson. I like that movie. I do too. And now we'll be back with old. <laughs> that was old, homework. An old man remembers <laughs> things he's seen. Have you ever seen Avalon? I have. It's good. Levinson. Levinson. <laughs> he did other movies, too. You aware? Diner. Tin Men. All good. I would say he is up there, and I don't want to talk about Woody Allen, are you? But he's up there in the, in the Woody Allen Scorsese category, don't you think? Or you, would you put Scorsese in a different category? Um, No, although I, I probably forget to mention Barry Levinson as one of the directors I love a lot. But right. when, you, when you go, you know my rule. If you have five great movies, you're great. And I think he does. I think he does, too. Uh, now you now I don't have five great movies I've directed. No, I only have two. <laughs> I still have to see, and you know this little Jewish. Now you didn't really do Jewish guilt, but you did ask me, did you watch the Lewis Lee thing? And I hadn't watched it, but now in the back of my mind, I've been. This has been the only thing that's been not the only thing, but the thing that has been in the back of my mind is that I never have liked the feeling of being on call in show, in show business. Right. I used to do a joke. No, I don't have a beeper. I don't believe in a show business emergency. Right. It's like, Andy, hurry, hurry down to the, hurry down to the view. Mother Jones is canceled. That was my <laughs> joke back in the old days. But so I never liked the idea that any minute 
it just bothers me because I'm not good with m- managing my time as it is. Right. So that was the thing that was like sticking in the back of my mind was, is this going to happen? Because I, I, I do have, which I don't know if you do have, I do have like a fears when I do something like this or, you know, like I don't want to travel. I don't want to this. I didn't know where we were going, coming to. So I always have those kind of, right. it goes away once you. It's way more there. intense with you. I don't like uncertainty very much. Right. You know, like I was pressing them pretty hard to, you know, show me the plane ticket. Show me, you know. Yeah. Send this to me now. Did you do, you didn't say show me the money though, right? I did not. No, Cause that was because it's, it's, you've seen the budget. <laughs> um, but, um, uh, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, you were saying that I w- I was more. Oh yeah, so you have yeah you have more more just sort of free floating anxiety than me for sure when it comes to like right. just am I going to get to the airport on time? Blah blah yeah, blah. Yeah, it blah, really blah. is. Am I and it, pack everything, but you know yes, all of that. And it's all the, it's all part of the self hating package that I am got myself. I have got control of it now. In other words, I know now when I'm doing it to myself better. That doesn't mean I have control of it. Right. But I'm way more aware well, of the self The ability to narrate it helps, you know. Yes, it does. But when I, I mean, fr- it doesn't help make you more fun to hang with, but it makes you more right. healthy. Well, what would make me more fun to hang with? Coming in on time? Just, I don't know, just a little less. <laughs> <laughs> of everything? Just a little cross oh, you're the board. saying across the board. Just a 20% cut. Wow. <laughs> you know what? I don't, I take that as a good note. Anxiety, too, I'm saying. <laughs> I take them no, no. Exactly. <laughs> Anxiety, uh, how much you feel to be the center of attention, just cut just it back. Twenty percent cut. That's the thing that I've noticed about therapy and whatever you else want to call it, the Prozac, whatever. I have been able to go and sit quietly without talking several times over the last year. Yeah, it's like in therapy. No, why would in you the do world? That? <laughs> <laughs> I answer them. No. <laughs> She has often said to me, can you just, why don't you just shut up for a while, she says. <laughs> I want some quiet time. Yeah, can you please, you know what, keep it to yourself if it's going to be that weird. <laughs> but I, no, like, even in the car today, this is one of the fir- few times, well, of course, I fell asleep. But this is one of the few times in my life where I can actually, I'm nervous about the shoot, but I know normally I would have, in, in the past, I would not be as aware of how much I'm peppering you with questions or peppering the people in the car. I would know I was doing it, right. but I, but I still would, but not enough to stop doing it. Right. <laughs> but when you can sit as a passenger and be silent for a little while, right. yeah, you're, you're a perfectly fine, uh, backseat mate. <laughs> Did I get a little handsy? A little handsy, but I, like I said, I, I don't, yeah, you know, no you're problem. perfectly fine. Your hands are warm. Oh, folks. Now, I, I started that homo... That's not even a homophobic rant. No, I found it to be so uh, sort of... Touching. Hom- homo endorsive. <laughs> that's right. And that's what I miss about running. That I used to love the homo, homo endorsement, endorphins. <laughs> yeah. That can't end. This joke can't end. Well, homo endorphins? No. That's... Hobo should not... It can't be used anymore. No, let's change it to hobo. <laughs> <laughs> but no one would ever... That is hobo erotic. <laughs> <laughs> hobo reminds me of the Joel Madison joke which is that uh, you you can't use the word bum anymore it was his joke years ago yeah. Oh, yeah I remember when you could use the word bum we used to dress up in parties you know we go to, right. <laughs> we go to the Halloween parties as a bum and now I never I cannot use that word I mean I'd be aware of it bum if I did or hobo uh, bu- uh, hobo no hobo is fine okay because hobo is like Old timey. It's just like peace. Yeah. yeah. What does it mean? Even I don't know what, um, the, what it's a uh, where the word came from. But calling someone a bum outside of a, ba- a, baseball, a baseball stage. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here, you bum! It doesn't wash with me. I'm yeah. not saying it washes with you. Either. No, it has no value, really. I don't know that I've ever called anyone a bum. But Joel Madison's joke is still very fun. Sure. Because. Uh, Joe Madison has. If we have guests on the show, I don't know if any new listeners are aware of this. If there are guests, he is slated to be our he's first. Slated guest. to be the first guest. Yes. How come we haven't gone back to? Have you ever performed at the Wendy Liebman place? No, I haven't. I, I, I was. I had. I had sort of like touched up against it once through Joel Madison, actually. Yeah. And then I never followed. Well, let's up. both do it. Okay. Let's both do yes. it. And how you know how Jew heavy that would be? That show. Yes. 
And it's uh, it's it, it's on the second floor of Vitello's. Vitello's, where uh, Robert Blake uh, his last right. meal with his All right, wife. Don't was. start with me because <laughs> I believe I, it t- totally sounded reasonable to me. He left it. He went to get his gun. How could I have shot her? I left my gun in the I restaurant. I left my gun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even get what his excuse was. I don't either. No, there must have been a reason. The gun must have been found somewhere. I I don't know. I can't. I can't. All right. I'm not conversant to the case anymore besides the very broadest strokes. Oh, he is out of, is he, a, one person's out of jail, but was civilly charged. I know that's OJ. Yeah. But what about uh, uh, Robert Blake? Is uh, he in jail? No. He's out of jail. He but he got sued or something? No. I don't, I don't he got know. off. Yeah. Oh. Well, let me tell you something. I don't normally get involved in murders and taking sides. Yeah. But that woman was a little obnoxious. <laughs> And that's the name of that tune. <laughs> and you can take that to the bank. <laughs> Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't do it. Is that the song? Keep your eye on the sparrow. <laughs> when the going gets narrow. And meanwhile, next week... He's going to have to email someone to say, I'm sorry, I can't release that show because I didn't clear my brother's right, song. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about my, sh- my show, that pitch about the Italian chef? It's called Burrata. <laughs> Listen to that vape hit. It's about that a chef. he took like a fucking George Burns cigar <laughs> hit as it's if like- he had just made a present for everyone. <laughs> it's just like a... It's a it's a no nonsense. It's a cop who breaks all the. I mean, it's a, it's a chef who breaks all the rules, <laughs> especially in his. My sous chef is seven days from retirement. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know I have OCD because I know I have OCD because uh, well for two reasons. Well, and I want to relate the story, but is because every time I pass by Vitello's. Or think of Vitello's. I think Robert Blake. Robert Blake. Well, Robert um, Blake. I think murders make probably the but most. Can I get make over restaurants it? famous. That's true. But you, Josh, caught me in a. Uh, it was really cool. It was like a silent movie. You caught me in a double OCD. <laughs> <It was pretty laughs> this is how well I know you now. Oh, because we were we were about to do a take today, and there was like a balled up paper towel that fell on the ground. So Andy can't handle seeing something like that with his OCD. So he picks it up and he just throws it back behind us. And then I see him look back at it on the ground where he threw it. And I was like, double OCD moment, huh? Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, that, that, no, but that's like, to me, either uh, I'm the greatest silent film actor or you are plugged in. I'm pretty plugged You're in. You're pretty plugged in. Having because... talked to you for about 200 hours over the last no, couple No of words years. were exchanged. No <laughs> words were exchanged. It was obvious that although I was removing the, the, th- uh, the towel, I mean the paper towel, to just make sure it wasn't in the shot, maybe extensively, as soon as I threw it around the corner, I was like, oh my God, what am I? It's sitting there. That can't sit. It's just sitting there. It's just sitting there. <laughs> and I actually said to myself, well, and then Josh picked it up and put it in his pocket. I did. I wanted you to concentrate on the take. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it was really fun working today. It really was. I had a really good time. I thought it was, uh, we got some of our relationship. Oh, even though, yeah. Even though we're not playing friends at all. I think we got some of the, <laughs> some of the chemistry. Yeah. We really are playing too. like complete strangers. Yeah. Uh, when does, when do you have your scenes with other people? Like, I mean like uh, the Leslie character. Uh, in January. Uh, we're complaining. For those of you, and please don't uh, light up the phone lines asking when it's coming out. Uh, we'll let you know. Yes, I assure you. <laughs> I like this. There will be updates. I like this new character, kind of, of the guy who just assumes, who uses the word fans a lot. Yeah, it's not cool. Do you think using the word fans, and um, except by mistake, is ever really cool? And um, maybe if you're a big, huge star. Um. You know, it's always nice to soften it somehow. <laughs> right. But like, you know, I can talk about fans of Mystery Science Theater There's or different. fans of Freaks and Geeks. Yes. You know. I could say I'm a fan to, of, to somebody. Right. I can too. Yeah. Yeah. But I... Uh, but if we say our fans really like our new... I think our fans will appreciate our new director. It's a slippery slope. It, it feels is a like slippery to me. slope. I like listeners better. Listeners is so much better yeah. because it's actually more accurate. It's true. <laughs> 
<laughs> it makes no assumptions. Yeah, I don't make the leap. These people, the people who are wildly enthused about us every week. Yeah. And there are a few. There are a few. Yeah. But, uh, you know, oh, by the way, Perush, please uh, log in that moment that was in the show. Was this the second time in the show's history that I remembered something you were saying? Earlier on, yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah, good. That's pretty great, yeah. Yeah. Magic well, moments. I Magic. I ruined it. It's that chemistry that we developed today. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. We had this. Uh, we had this one scene where we're walking down a row of horse stalls, <laughs> and uh, and there were horses' heads popping out of the stalls as we walked by, and like you know, a couple of them would take you know almost chomps at you. <laughs> Could they bite? Could a horse bite? Yeah, a couple of guys got bit today. Not a couple hard. of guys got bit. Yeah, on the crew. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even believe you're telling me this. Johnny Fogg was getting nibbled on while he was doing but the But like fog. he broke the skin? No. Oh. No, no one got hurt. Right. But, you know. They, How do we know they're not there was one. There was one where I was standing behind you and the horse was trying to go for you. But not in a friendly way, right? Not, well, who knows? It wasn't, it wasn't violent, but it was like you, you took off just as, I was, as this was happening. So. Yeah, because as I was walking down and I could see these horses reach, like part of me was like, are they like dogs? They're nuzzling? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not nuzzling. They could be if they knew who I was. Uh, well, they were familiar with my work. <laughs> right. <laughs> but but the, I got worried because we, you know, we had to walk down that corridor a bunch of times back yeah. and forth doing this scene over and over again. I mean, not, not we didn't mess it up or anything. <laughs> we just, you know. Um, but I just felt like at one of the, one of these horses is going to fucking snap <laughs> one of these times we go by. Now, let's say they I used to be a horseback rider. I told you this maybe or not, but yeah. I fell off twice. So I I know how to ride a horse, but it's still scary to me. If they got out of the stall, right? Yeah. There's no way they they're not coming. Could they be coming at you? Like I'm no, so tired of your acting and I then, suppose they could. They could they could but, get a bug up their ass. But they're more like don't corner them, I would think. Yeah. I don't I don't you don't hear about horse attacks very much. <laughs> you hear about horse accidents, but... I did decide that I don't want to be a horse from seeing them today. Yeah, it didn't seem that fun. I th the, you know, do but the dogs were having more fun there than the horses. So I believe it's all... Well, but these were actual racehorses. These were, these were thoroughbreds. Oh, were they really? Yeah. Oh, that one guy said, I got to take that... He, he was funny. He said, I got to take that bucket. Are you going to shoot again? Because I got to take that bucket out of there. Because right. if you don't take it out... She's never letting go. Of yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, here's the thing about being a horse. Obviously, what is it called? Anthropomorphizing when you when you when you you added a syllable, but yes, that's anthropomorphize. Right, anthropomorphize. So you think about how you would feel as a horse, right? And it's like, oh my god, it's hard. This is great. Oh, great! Another fly is on my eye. <laughs> right. Wonderful. Wait a second. I'll just. It's Gus, the sarcastic horse. Oh, great. oh, oh no, great. no, yeah. <laughs> great. Fly nice. to my eye. No, 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 no it's please, great. please get on me. <laughs> get on me because you're obviously. Uh, hey, wait a second, let me let me uh, see if I can shoo you. Oh no, I am not capable it's weird. biologically. It's weird. You got your feet into their st into these stirrups, but they don't seem to fucking work on the ground. Is that your? <laughs> I so I really feel that being a horse is. I'm projecting that it wouldn't be much fun. Yeah, but some people. Uh, uh, I don't know what. How how where fun ranks in the animal kingdom on the no but love between a horse and the person that ha does happen sure or at and, least bond I don't know if it's love on the horse's part well Prince said I want to take you to the place where horses run free I'm um, the only reason why I'm saying it so you don't start singing and and cause us to lose the second one <laughs> <laughs> although I have such mixed feelings I would like to hear you sing yeah. all the time. Well, thank you. But then I, that's then a whole if, other show, Fred. But if it's not Jimmy Crack Corn or Public Domain, I start to care. get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not Jimmy Crack Corn, you don't care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the, the, there were so many dogs there. They were so cute. They the were dogs. great dogs. Yeah, they and, were very happy to have people around. Oh, I see that. You would know that more as a dog person that, that you could tell that they were like. Um, yeah, they loved yeah. they loved having the action and the uh, people. And they couldn't have been. They were really fun. They all of them were fun. Yeah. Uh, but I was trying to figure out if you're going to spend a day at a horse ranch in Louisiana, this was the way to do it. Now, here's a question that's going to sound as stupid as my. Our flies an Baseline? animal. Oh, sorry. What? My flies are, are flies an animal <laughs> right. phase. 
But what came first, the horse or the evolutionary relationship between the horse and people? I know you're going to say the horse came first and then people said, hey, let's use this was good. But there's something about me that won't that thinks it's more magical. Than that. So Nothing. what? You, so well, let's let's look into this. Okay. How do you propose that man created horse? Oh, right. Man couldn't. That's right. Man couldn't create horse. But yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't wash. So yeah, wild horses came before domesticated horses. Right. Because now I'm thinking of like how they breed dogs. Yeah. But that's from breeding. In other well, words, they didn't yeah. take. They didn't so are, make a dog. So are thoroughbreds, right? But they didn't make a make a dog like a generic dog and then turn it into a th- thoroughbred. In other words, they, the 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 started with wolf. I, oh oh, so dogs were dogs pre- descended from wolves. Oh yes. So what and happened? What's the difference between them? A uh, different animal. Uh, same family. And you mean that literally this time? Yeah. Well, that's what, a different I mean, animal. What happened was certain wolves showed friendliness. To humans. Wow. And those are the ones that got perpetuated. So over the years, that friendliness and human interaction, that thing that makes wolf, you know, makes a dog just hang around, be cool, you know, get some food from the humans and then maybe start protecting them or something, you know, serving right. some purpose. So there were those wolves. Yes. And then those wolves became useful to humans. And then through breeding, you know, the, the more desirable traits got kept so that's the thing that's the thing that i was actually confused about that is true and that's true of horses too right right you know they would breed certain qualities first ridden horse is different from a current horse the first because of people right right uh but like i used to think it was in you know in my mind i would think these dogs are used because they naturally fetch or something but that's not what happened no that's not what the dog never woke up and said i'm gonna run well maybe a dog would run after every object that was thrown I don't know. Right. But you select the one that's the best at it. Right. And that's the one you breed. Unless you, you know, sometimes I like to go the other way. Like I have a dog who can't walk very well. That's why we have uh, shelters. Well, that's <laughs> terrible. Now, I, one of my favorite bands, and I know you love them too, is Los Lobos. Yes. And I always love the song, Will the Wolf Survive? Yeah. And the, my question is, were wolves persecuted and overly killed? Yes. And they still are. And they still are. Yes. Because because of ranchers, because they kill livestock. Oh, so like there's like there's like a Yellowstone pack of wolves that are protected, but if they set one foot outside of Yellowstone, they're hunted down. But they don't know. What? They don't know. No, exactly. <laughs> wow, is this because you're smarter than me, or, or you have an interest in it, or a combination of both? I'd like to think it's a hybrid. <laughs> And so now this is also true with with buffalo, right? Weren't buffalo then they just start killing them because why they start why they eliminate the buffalo? Because they hunted them to extinction. Right, because but why? Oh, because they didn't th- care. They just didn't care in those days. You had your buffalo bill. Yeah, and they, they had just no sense cut, of conservation. Eat, eat, cut. Right. What is your feeling about uh, being a vegan? Because I've met people in the last couple of months who uh, actually a friend of mine who's like. Reacted to me saying Temple Grandin had humane slaughterhouses. And then my friend said, oh, and all of a sudden went to the Holocaust. And the, the point being that I didn't realize that other people are very emotional about it. And that just me saying right. I saw the Temple Grandin thing doesn't necessarily. It's not like I'm being rude, but I didn't, didn't foresee that some people, it's, they really have an ethical yeah, Objection. well, just the phrase "humane slaughter," right, makes yeah, is already a weird juxtaposition. Yeah, but Temple Grandin says they have they have the the because she's she's uh, has she's autistic whatever you yeah. call autistic. She says they don't care about it. They could care less. Couldn't they have no memory. They don't know what's going to happen. It's only that they're suffering as you're bringing them through. They don't know they're going into a slaughterhouse. No, I agree with that. Right. So. I start to but think, but it's not a. Que- I mean, but you're still killing them. I mean, that's the ultimate cruelty that people are upset by is more than the. I well, I thought it was. Yeah, that's where I see. I want there to be a world where they're free range. The chickens are free range, and they retire and they volunteer. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, what is your opinion now? Like, I feel 
different opinions about eating meat now. Right. Because like I I've evolved some, I think, and I do see it as evolution to some extent. I mean, I think you know we know that it's terrible for the planet, beef production. Right. You know, we know that it's you know not that great for your health. We know you know, but the main thing to me, and the main thing that because of uh, the other podcast with Mark Thompson, who's a very a, a very vocal and active animal rights advocate and vegan. Um, well, you you could be an animal rights activist and not be a vegan, though, right? Yes, that's why yeah. I listed both. Okay. Um, although you won't find that many yeah, at that's this true. point. <laughs> but, um, but he, you know, he's he's also kind of a, you know, a Palm Steakhouse kind of guy. You know, the kind of people he hangs out with are more Steakhouse guys and vegan-y guys. But he is a vegan But he's now. a vegan. And right. He takes a lot of shit from people. Um, but he's really, while being incredibly active in the community, in the in the animal community, well, the animal activist community, not that active in the animal community. <laughs> right. He's also, you know, respectful of others. You know, respectful of people who aren't vegans, and that you know, he doesn't spray scorn on people the way that some people do. Yeah, and I don't so think. So I, you know, yeah. I think we need. I think it. I, you know, I do think. Just for the planet's sake, we see we sort of we need to eat less meat at least. Well, but even for yeah. like Michael Pollan wrote a book, who's a very good writer on food and stuff, and he says he was very against when everything went to low fat, right? Because it was just like we started shoving carbs. Right. He, his whole thing was uh, meat is healthy for you, just you eat smaller portions of right. it, right? And I I think some people are would not be healthy without eating beef. I mean, without really knowing what they're doing. But ultimately, I mean, ultimately, just the the basic core issue for me is that factory farming, yes, is a fucking Awful. aberration. It is a mess. Yes, you know, it is horrible what we do to animals to eat them in this country. Well, and all over the world, not just this country. And you know, go it's to not China. getting better. Go to China; they have even less respect for the animals oh. there. But it's, uh, you know, so I don't know. I mean, I feel like. I mean, do I aspire to be a vegan? Not really. You well, know. how do you, how do you, see, how do you. But I, you know, I mean, the thing that could, would get fixed to me is make, is the Temple Grandin approach, which is. Yes. Okay. We've decided as a species, we're going to do this. But as, since we're humans, we can do it better. Right. Because know? we can see their suffer. We don't want anybody to suffer visually. Right. But see, when I used to fish. But it's about cost. It's all about cost. It's about cost mm-hmm. of the consumer and cost to the companies, you know. When I used to fish though, I didn't feel I like I I didn't feel the same guilt about catching a fish and eating it. No, and I think a lot of people have that that dichotomy. I mean, I don't like that the that they're dead. Right. <laughs> but okay. you don't feel cruel. I don't feel I, for some reason I don't feel cruel. Yeah. I didn't at the time. I don't fish now. Right. And the thing is this, uh, Alan Watts, who was like one of my favorite philosophers, he had a whole like hour talk where he just talked about how if you look at, uh, at the planet, big things are eating little things and little things are eating littler things. I mean, it's kind of all through nature. But now other people are saying, like, I always wonder, like, how can you be so like, you know, these lions and tigers are eating raw, you know, they're uh, predators. Right. Why is it okay for them to be a predator? And it's because okay? they can't provide options for themselves like we can. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. You know, when you use your brain and find <laughs> that you can come to these conclusions. Right. I see. So I don't know. I just, I don't feel, I don't, I mean, I do, I guess, feel like being vegan is a, is a slightly higher moral position. Right. But I believe that being an asshole vegan cancels that out. And I have told you that story about I think it's called the Gemini Awards when I hosted the pet shop and there was the uh, the guy who uh, did Charlotte's Web yeah and uh, these were these were animal activists and they gave him an award for something and uh, no it wasn't the Charlotte's it wasn't E B White he's dead it was the one of the Hannah or Barbera one of those guys they were very old and okay. they were getting an award for their Charlotte's Web series or whatever and he just got up there and he started to say how. Yes, and I visited. He visited E. B. White before he died, or something. And yeah. he said we had a great lobster dinner together. And the whole audience, <gasps> <gasps> really, yeah. And then he didn't realize it because he didn't know that he was getting this reaction. And he was the, the next time I visited him, we even had we had a special kind of lobster that required thirty lobsters. Totally not. And the crowds are <laughs> <laughs> afterwards. They made somebody made him cry. 
Really? Yeah, Hanno Barbera. They made him cry by coming up to him and saying, how could you tell that story? So that's, I think, where someone, they're being not nice in a way. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know, ultimately it's a pro-choice issue, you know? It really is. It's the same kind of issue. You have to, you know, it's all about what's your moral baseline, you know? Yes, yeah. If you're pro-life and you believe that a fetus is, is a human life, then I, you know, on a baseline, you know, I got to respect that you believe that because ultimately it is just that that's the whole debate where does life begin right so you know and so if you believe that life begins at conception then you do have some sort of moral obligation i guess to fight against it right maybe uh, maybe i don't know because if you think about the other way the other way is thinking yes you well, but i believe that you know the second part of that though yeah. is how do you fight against it you know is well Absolutely. You know, there are responsible, moral, um, and you know, admirable ways to fight for causes that are opposite of what I believe. You know, and so that that you know, when I was really active in pro choice stuff when I was younger, it was I always had that sort of dichotomy of sort of both vilifying the opposition, but also sort of understanding that. If you believe this, You're, it's a pretty strong belief, you know. Right. So it's a, it's a tough issue, but well, I, but I think it's sort of similar to meat eating, which is like if you believe that humans were meant to eat meat, and that's your baseline thing. Yeah. You know, should you fight for it? No, not necessarily. But you know, but it's a baseline belief. You know, that right. can't be disputed. It can be argued, but it can't be proven yeah, wrong but what they don't the, the one thing that they that it doesn't include i'm not saying you're including or not including it what it doesn't include is that if you say i believe killing a fetus is murder and that's why i want to make it illegal and the facts are that much more people will die that many more unwanted babies will come into the world then you're not then it's not as more it's it's moral only because you're choosing to look at it in that one no, way. No, I, I think that's true. I, I agree with that. I mean, I, it's, but it's, but to me, that's more a question of how do you manifest your position right? more than how do you come to your position. You saying that I've known people in my life who have been very, like, they're just, that's their only issue in a way. Right. You know, you at some point when someone's that sincerely upset about something, it's hard to hate them. Right. But then when if if they really believe that they can kill a doctor or or even that, that well, they that, can stay a foot outside of a clinic well, and harass the, people. Yeah, yeah. Or just terrify fucking women. Right. You know, and harass women who are doing something legal that they believe is within their moral bounds as well. Yeah. So, you know, those aren't the people you attack to make change. You know, that's a voting issue primarily. Right. You know, and it's a it's a social issue that, you know, that there are healthy ways to try to promote your point of view. Right. You know, I'm not encouraging people to do this because I'm on the other side of the issue. I believe in pro-choice, but part of pro-choice is choice. Yes. You know, so I believe that pro-choice covers everybody, whereas pro-life doesn't. You know? Well, like even with someone like the even with, but even like the Unabomber or some of these people there who are sick were sick people. There is a part of them that they are legitimately upset about some slight in their life. Right. Right. And then it's just now that you can respect. <laughs> <laughs> no. And you know, all kidding aside, I know that I'm too angry I and mean, I'd like to be less angry. Yeah. So it's not like I know that I'm angry and I'm proud of it. I don't want to hate myself for it, but I want to be able, but I, I know that it shouldn't be that way all the time. But when it gets pathological or whatever the word is, like with a Unabomber, you can see how some of these people, they, they they go over into uh, extremism in a very well, strange way. Well, you're not allowed way. to kill for your beliefs. You're just not, yes. unless it's war, you know, right? Which we somehow made a loophole for. But that's changing too, though. But you are not allowed. You know, there's no way to justify. Yeah, killing a doctor. Killing a doctor. Yeah, you know. But you know that the idea of committing murder to support your support of life. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not it's, only it's not only no, reprehensible; that, it's it's inconsistent. <laughs> it's, it's inconsistent, but you know the idea about uh, war has changed too over time. Sure. It didn't used to be that. Well, I don't know. I, I'm not a historian, but it didn't used to be that that collateral damage was even considered. Sometimes they well, just because you know 
a straight arrow. <laughs> you yeah. know? It's not like there was massive explosions that could cause collateral damage right. before right. The but, modern times. But they did, but like they would target the enemy's people. And they seem to think that's changed over time. Even now you'll hear people uh, say, you know, um, you know, it's sad that Germany got, oh, you know, if they were, I don't know if they were. Well, the Geneva bombed. Convention was the sort of major, tur- you know, the major modern turning point of going, okay, we're going to have rules for this shit. Yeah. And that's, and I think it's, it sounds crazy, but it's actually good. Very good. Well, it's one notch more civil. It's one more, notch more civil. You know, it's not all the way there, but it's one notch better. Because like someone like McCain who was tortured, he realizes that when you, when, it, to just say I'm going to keep torturing and 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 to just keep putting yourself into that position where you're doing to other people, it, the, the, it just you're, it does. You're, yeah, you're perpetuating the yeah, you're perpetuating. hate cycle, if you will. Because America is nothing. America is nothing if if we don't get back some kind of sense of we're trying to do our best not to hurt people, and we haven't been able to keep to that goal through our whole history, because you know, right, World but it's War like II- we stopped talking the good game, even. Yes, with, <laughs> tr- with Trump, yeah. right? With the I didn't want to bring up his name, but you know, after World War II, like my dad told me, he would have gone to World, like he he tried to volunteer, he tried to volunteer, but he couldn't because he had like he was almost blind, you know, in, in yeah. the uh, army way. But he said, so I would have. <laughs> <laughs> was that he knew he was like i'm going to volunteer <laughs> but, yeah i'm not saying my look, my father is not a jew is not in the book of jewish war heroes uh which is the thinnest book but the thing is is that he said i would have felt differently before world war ii like like i knew i wasn't going i was almost aged to go to vietnam and i knew there was no fucking way the war was wrong and i wasn't going right but in before world war ii people did feel like yeah, that, I, yeah. I want a piece of this because as opposed it's right to, and wrong, yeah. right? As opposed to World War One, which there really wasn't much right or wrong in there. There was just people just went crazy. Yeah, there was more hate there than there was ever. You know? Yeah. No, it was World War One was completely out of control <laughs> the, the way the way it spiraled. You know? Now I like that it was numbered. That's the only thing that I. Yeah, it was visionary of them. I do believe in the American dream, though. About, I do believe that the American dream of like rock and roll and art and let's be nice people. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not exclusive to us, but I think we have that no, spirit. Well, but I believe, I mean, but what I believe about it is that what makes America great is immigration. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. that is, that is the exceptionalist thing is that you have those people from every country who are brave enough to make that leap and go try to make something for themselves elsewhere. You know, and you have a whole country built on those kind of people. And we've we've locked into the idea that we're a white country somehow, you know. Well, no, thankfully, not a majority. I mean, we has. haven't, but. No, but the country, but yeah, that's been the, you know, what, what but, propelled but Trump. Yeah, there's this, there's this percentage of people who believe that America is inherently white. Yeah. Because that was the first wave of immigration. And it's just, it's not true. And it's not, it's not the spirit of what we do here. The spirit is if you're that person who who has that spirit to get the fuck out of there and come here, we want you. Right. And evil people forever have used this other. They're the other. Yeah, as, but we don't a, have the other here because we're all the other. No, but I mean, obviously I'm right. idealistic and stupid, but you know, but that, I mean, that's how it should be is we shouldn't have fucking others because we're all others. Right, but the white. Where in nation- other countries that have homogeny, you at least see the ra- you know, you see sort of like the the rationale for the racism, I guess. You know what I mean? Because it really is other. Right, right. You know, I go to Japan, I feel like fucking other. Okay, so it is crazy. I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy. It shows how crazy the idea is, but of of saying they're the other and we're better. Right. It's crazy when it literally isn't true when Irish people. Yeah, it is simply or, the order in which we immigrate. Italian here. people, all these people came and were Jewish people. They were all, um, there was a lot of prejudice against all Chinese people. There was, everyone. but there was also because Jewish, Irish, Italian were all white. There was also not as much, you know, there was lots of Jews who can get a free pass in society, not operating yes. as a jew if you're black you don't have that option or know? if you're chinese or, and they and right. you and they're going after the japanese you know what i mean right. like it's like 
Like, that was a horrible thing that, you know, it was like the thing that Trump says, oh, well, Roosevelt did it. It was a horrible chapter. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's his favorite time. Right. Well, I think we've solved all of America. I think problems. we have. I think uh, normally we'd just be answering questions at this point of the show. So that just shows how now we're asking them. <laughs> And I want to announce formally here that our show from here on out is going to be deadly serious discussions <laughs> yes. of controversial topics. For example. We'll start with self-aggrandizement every week and right. all the exciting things we're doing. And then we'll sort of ramp it into some sanctimonious preaching. Yes. <laughs> and, and agreement. And then edginess. So, for example, <laughs> next week, we're going to be looking at cannibalism a little differently. Is That's it, right. <laughs> Is it bad? It's just a pro-choice issue. <laughs> right. A spider consumes a bigger spider or something. Exactly. That's the or other way around. Probably, I forget. But, <laughs> but uh, actually, I read something where the women like the bigger spiders to eat because they're more. I don't know what I'm saying. Well, there's more but food. <laughs> there's more food. <laughs> so, yes. So next week, we're going to have some, pro, you know, it's like pro cannibalism and uh, anti cannibal Well, it's very likely I will be on a high dose of painkillers for next week's show, too. <laughs> so oh, come back for that. The thing that I'm very concerned about is someone like me, not me exactly, but someone like me getting a little desperate and rubbaging, rubbaging through a friend's <laughs> house. Yeah. You know, oh, Josh, can I use the bathroom? I'm gone for 20 minutes <laughs> looking for the hydro. Because I know for a fact that you don't keep it in your medicine chest. <laughs> no. And you're not, a, you're not an idiot. <laughs> so that's not going to be where I'm going to get heaven. No. First, I'm going to be begging for them. I, one I, lo I load up Pez dispensers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be the new uh, wave of uh, narco traffic. Yes. They'll never suspect. <laughs> it's perfect. You put. You know how much you could fit that way? In a business. Who would suspect Daffy Duck's neck being filled with drugs? <laughs> it works especially for this great rectangular drug that we <laughs> right. perfected. <sighs> how long have we been going on now? Uh, we're well over an hour. You know what? This has felt like a dream to me. This was. I'm very glad we did this. Oh, well, good. I was nervous about doing this. I was tired, looking for a way out, like I always am. Right. I'm always looking. You were for trying to get out of the movie the other day, even. <laughs> That, that's true. We should do it in January. <laughs> All right. Here's the thing. I will not say that it was unreasonable what I was saying. It was not unreasonable because I was not in constant connection with this thing. And, and, and for something to be not happening... And then all of a sudden it was happening. But I made the wrong call. I was ready to say, let's put it in January. And then you went, I said, let's, look, let's do it all in January. And then you said, I have a plane ticket. What do you want to do now? <laughs> right. At that well, point. I just wanted to do, you know, if no. were, you know, even if we're, I mean, even if we're doing what we're doing, which is just shooting four or five days, I mean, which is not insubstantial in the way that he shoots. I mean, that's more than half the movie almost. Yes. Um, but I just wanted to make it real. You know, we've had this floating thing and to wait another month to see if it was real. And now with the added thing of, oh, and you have a huge role. <laughs> I was, right. When I had a cameo. Yes. I really was fine with it going away. No, you made the wrong. You made the right call. But it, I see it like as a game show. My initial my 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 initial uh, urge is to put it off to January. Right. That's going to be more pushing it off to January. If it really does come down to the last day. You know, yeah, and it was the last day before. You know, we were it kind of was the last possible day, possible to start day because you had to do anything practical. Yeah. yeah, so I'm thrilled about it. Thrilled about it, and uh, uh, you and we made, got another day tomorrow, and I've got another day Wednesday, and, uh, and this is how much we care is that we're still doing the podcast. What a sacrifice! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people realize. <laughs> How do we wrap up a show like this? If uh, I was almost going to just do it with the apnea there, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you mean you want to go with an abrupt ending? Oh wait, no, not now, not now that you flagged it. You're not going to make up fake questions, are you? No, no, I'm not. Or talk about emails? Are you? <laughs> what is this new accusatory? I, I don't voice? understand. But since you brought it up, hey, if you want to talk to us during the week, give us. <laughs> Give us an email at thoughtspiralshow at gmail.com. Of course, follow us on Twitter at thought underscore spiral. 
check out the Zazzle site for all your holiday merch needs. Merch. Zazzle.com slash thought underscore spiral. Cha cha. Cha cha. Don't add the cha cha. Uh, that'll take you to different <laughs> merch. <laughs> cha cha dot org. Cha cha dot org is the new one. But also, oh, I forgot. Damn it. Damn it. What else should they do, Andy? What else should they do? I have one but more. Also, th- yes. Not email. Not Twitter. Not merch. Are you trying to make me remember? I'm trying to make you remember. You can't make an old man. It's like <laughs> it's like showing the peaches an old man just ate. <laughs> and I should uh, no more. I'm going to start to cut back on my dementia jokes. <laughs> this is it appropriate if I'm suffering from dementia to do the dementia? That's fine then, right? Yes. Then you're coping. But let me ask you this. Is it okay for me if I have dementia to do the jokes? Yeah, I think it's a good sign. Okay, let me ask you That's, this. That'll is be our okay? barometer for your progress. Let me ask you this. Is it okay? I'm doing... Uh, do you know the bit that I'm doing? It was going to go on forever. Yes. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> You're usually unwilling to go along with my wacky bits. Well, I'm just searching for an ending. Anyway, please help us. <laughs> Give whatever you can. <laughs> That's right. Thanks for listening to this special edition of Thought Spiral. I love all, all of you, except for the people and... and uh, Mm. Good night. Bye-bye.